Welcome boys and girls to our next flip video. Now this one's going to be a little shorter, but keep in mind you still do have pausing, replaying, playback, rewinding powers to do this with the video, with the technology and the clickings. So make sure that you do all that. Today we're just going to talk a little bit more about bathymetry. Specifically, we're going to talk about drawing up some contours. Now those of you that have had uh, meteorology or geology, get pumped, because it's going to be exactly like it was before, except this time, instead of contouring, say, pressure lines or elevation above the Earth's surface, this time we're going to be contouring the ocean floor. So it's really fun. So now that we understand about plate tectonics, we'll be able to do this. Now you have seen contour lines before. Just remember, these ones are now measuring bathymetry, bathos being the Greek word for depth, and metry being the word for measurement. Now, once upon a time, they used to do it with like big old cables, and they'd stick them down in there. You've heard the uh, term fathom before. A uh, fathom is roughly six feet, and they would, you know, just stick these big cables down there and figure out basically how many six-foot fathoms were down there. Now, there's a lot more technology, but essentially, we're making these the contour maps that we make for ocean bathymetry are going to be pretty much looking the same as any of these with a few uh, unique features since it's on the ocean floor. To make a bathymetric map, you have to follow some of the rules. Now when you have the map, you must make sure that you're showing the depth on the contour. All right, so here the contour is going to show the depth, the scale, you should have a scale somewhere on there, there should be a numerical scale, maybe even a graphical scale, you know, graphical scale would be like this much equals 25 feet. The uh, numeric scale would be just saying 2 millimeters would be 20 kilometers, like in our last lab that we are doing. You always want to make sure that you have a title for your chart. Title for the chart is very, very important. Otherwise, how will people know what part of the ocean they're looking at? And then make sure you have your latitude and longitude shown somewhere on the map. And as you can see on this map here, it's showing you uh, Mississippi. And it's showing you uh, here, obviously, Pensacola. That is in Florida. So this is the Mississippi-Alabama shelf that they're showing you right in here. And you can see all these contour lines. It's actually showing you how the seafloor looks off the coast of Florida-ish area in Alabama, which is over in here in Louisiana. And so you can actually see uh, this one's not the best because it should have several lines of longitude down on the bottom, lines of latitude here on the side, showing you exactly what part of the world we're looking at. And you also need a north arrow for this one. North is up, and so bam, slap an N on it. Worst N ever, and you've got your north. There's a couple rules for making isobaths, which is the measurement of depth. So those are iso, where iso means same bath, meaning depth again, so lines showing the same depth, lines of equal depth. So here are your rules, all right? The lines must never cross. They all need to be parallel. When you looked at the map before, go ahead and rewind if you can't remember what it looks like. You looked at the map before, they're all parallel to each other. They never cross, never intersect, never. All right? Anytime where you have a canyon, just some area where there's a deep trench or some kind of underwater canyon, you're going to make a V. They're going to make a V. Geology students, it's the same thing like a river basin. They're going to make a V. All right? You got to separate the depth zones. All right? Remember, every single point on the line is an equal depth. So if it's on one side of the line, it's got to be higher. If it's on the other side of the line, it must be be lower. And then when you're spacing, keep in mind the spacing gives you an idea about the steepness or the grade. So if they're closer together, that means you have a really, really, really steep slope. And if they're farther apart, then it's not so steep. So essentially what you guys are going to make are these. You're going to be taking some sand and you're going to do a lab for a couple days where you're going to play with the sand and make me a little underwater feature. So you're gonna keep in mind that Instead of like measuring the depth from the floor up, you're going to be measuring from the height of the imaginary ocean. Well, let's say if the height of the imaginary ocean is here, and this is almost at the surface, then you're going to be measuring the depth from the ocean down. Remember, we're measuring depth. So when you do this lab, you'll have the trusty, handy dandy lab hand up. This is a up in the class. So you must make sure you read lab hand up. 
you have pre-lab questions, especially how much is fathom. So you're going to make these. Make sure you have to have a gentle sloping area. You can see that this side has a gentle sloping area. You must have some area with a steep sloping area. We use the rig for a steep sloping area. And then somewhere you can sort of see it down in this area here. Somewhere you must have an underwater canyon cutting through one of the sides. I highly recommend it cuts through the not so steep side, otherwise uh, you're going to have a rough time. And it must have at the top some sort of hilltop, so up here, right? So, so when you do this, you're going to end up with this would be the overview of that one, and you'll notice that they've taken string and they've used it to mark the depths. Now this is actually a little bit trickier than it looks like. We're going to have different sounding poles. Essentially, just like we talked about yesterday, how we used to stick poles down there and they just would have like marks on them and just lowered in, count how many flags have been lowered into there, or use a sonar, measure the amount of time it comes back, use some speed equations, some velocity, some mathematics, and then you can tell how far it went. So same idea, you're just going to stick some poles in there, find all the areas of equal depth, pick a contour interval, doesn't matter what it is, and you're going to come up with a scale, so each little tick on the rods could be, you know, a couple meters, could be a couple kilometers, however you want to do it. It's your imaginary underwater structure. Essentially, you're going to go through and then you're going to place the string on the sand everywhere that has that point and form closed loops. It gets really, really difficult right in this area here. That would be your underwater canyon. See how it's making the V or the U shape? I see a lot of times kids will just be suspending the string over air. The string must not be in the air. The string must always be touching the sand. Works a little bit better if you have wet sand so the string can really stick on there real good. But the string must always be touching the sand. No suspended string. Remember, we're marking the depth, not some imaginary line. And then what you guys are essentially going to do, you're going to transfer that three-dimensional structure into two-dimensional structure, flatten it out, and turn it into a map. Make sure you have some latitude and longitude. You can make it up. It doesn't matter. Make sure that you have your contours. You can see here we've got contours. And let's say the interval was 100. They're going to the fathoms, so 100 fathoms. So then this one, if it's getting you know, closer to the surface, the number should be lower. That's the hard part. We're not doing elevation. We're doing depth. So then this one at the bottom, that should be your biggest number, and every point along this line, every point along the line there, is 6,000 fathoms. So then this one should be 5,900 fathoms. And then the next one after that will be 5,800 fathoms. And it's okay if it never comes to zero. If it never comes to zero up here, that is totally okay, because if it came to zero, that would mean that it is at the surface of the water, and then you just made a really big, awkward island. So try to keep away from doing the islands unless you're feeling especially frisky. You're going to draw me a map. Don't forget your north arrow, which is right here on the side. Don't forget your scale. They have a nice ratio scale right there. For more on that, you have the paper. It tells you everything that you need to have on there. Don't forget the conclusion questions. If you guys have any questions, uh, just post them in the forum or bring them to class. Thanks for watching.